So it's a dream home for, for you and your family, and, and you had mentioned on the phone that this is a, a place to give your dogs more room to run around in, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, especially with the river. They, they love to swim. They were hunting dogs, so it was perfect for them. So tell me a little bit about your dogs. Uh, when did you get them? How old were they? So there's Freya. She was a coon hound. She was five years old when she died. Um, she was awesome. She loved chasing birds. She loved to swim. And then there was Alpin. And he was two and a half years old. He was a Weimariner. He was about almost 100 pounds. And he loved just to run around and laugh. And he's, he was a great dog. And then we had Rhea. She was a German Shepherd. She wasn't as high energy as the other two, but she was just happy to be part of the family. What kind of hunting did you, did you do with them? Um, I've only went bird hunting with them a couple times. Really, we just got them because we like to run and like to mountain bike and stuff like that, and they would just tag along with us. When we lived in Newport, we would ride snowmobiles, and they would just tag along with us for the whole ride. Great, athletic, <clears throat> adventurous family. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So kind of walk me through, uh, as you posted about a, a really awful event that happened with your family, kind of walk me through Thursday of, of what happened. So we were, we were swimming in the river, just hanging out, throwing the stick to the dogs. Um, and it was about 7 o'clock. It was time to put my son down to bed. So Krista took the son to bed, took the dogs inside to dry off for the night. And she did the whole routine of singing him to sleep, changing his diaper, giving him a bath. And 20 minutes later, we, she goes in to check on the dogs, and all three of them are just laying right next to each other dead. Yeah. What went through your mind at that point? I mean, seeing them, they never acted that way before. Right? Yeah, never. No, they were, I mean, right up to going into the house, they were running around, jumping on us, just smiling. And what happened was I was just walking into three dead dogs. Um, it was shock, and I didn't know what else to do. And then my son, at that point, because Krista was crying, my, she was screaming. My son had woken up, and my mother-in-law went and got him, and she didn't know what happened. So she walked in, and my son, who's 17 months old, saw all three dogs. And so that's when I just wrapped all three of them up, I put I put him in the back of my side by side. I went out in the field and I dug a big hole with my tractor and buried him because I just wanted them to be rested, you know, in peace. Yeah, I didn't know what else to do. <clears throat> what, else, what else can you do, right? Yeah, I mean, people are saying, well, why don't you take him to the vet? I mean, if you walked in and saw your 80-pound dogs, healthy dogs, dead, and you lifted up. A, limp bodies like that going to the vet in my mind they were already dead so i just wanted to rest and put them to rest yeah yeah and my son was right there so i just didn't want him to see that yeah did they have any symptoms um, before they, they passed unexpectedly no no so like literally we t krista put him in the garage they were fine and it wasn't, it's not, yeah, yeah. And, and they spend, that's a converted garage. It's all part of the house now. So it's a, it's just a regular, like, it's like a man cave. And we leave them in there all the time. And went in there and they were, they were just dead. No, no symptoms, no signs. Alpin, the 80 pound Weimariner had thrown up and it was dark brown, dark, like blackish throw up. And the rest of the dogs, you know, defecated and eyes bulging out. It was just, a, it was like a walking into a war zone. It was horrible. Did they have any other uh, health, health concerns before that? No, no, definitely not. They were, the, they were the healthiest dogs. They ran the two, the Weimariner and the, the Frey and Alpin, they run five miles daily. When we lived up on the mountain, they, we would just let them roam wild, and they would just come back. Yeah, I take them for rest in the morning, they have no problem. Yeah, they, they keep up, up with us, no problem. Alpin jumps like six feet in the air, flat-footed, um, no health problems at all. Yeah, healthy diets, 
besides the butter that he likes to eat sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ribeye. Snacks that they like. Yeah. Well, um, I, I know a lot of folks will, will hear your story. You have a lot of pet friendly families yeah. in our community, right? And I, I know that this, your story is just going to resonate with Yeah. Are you just as concerned um, yes. not knowing what dangers lie in the river? I guess, can you kind of talk about that? So it could either be in the river or it could be on the shorelines of the river. So our two methods of, or scenarios are the blue-green algae or poison from, you know, because we have beavers on the river and they try to eat down our trees. So I know people are trying to stop that. So it could have very easy, easily been um, like some rat poison for the beavers or any kind of poison for the beavers. And it just, I just, it seems like it happened so quickly, right? You, you guys had a nice evening on the water, yep. brought them in to dry off, and what, 20 minutes later? Within 20 minutes, they were all dead at the same time. Yeah, all three dogs. Yeah, healthy okay, dogs. We also talked with EPA, EPA, we got the ecology department and coming they, out. They said to look into yeah. mushrooms as well, because I've been sprinkling the lawn because of the fires and everything, and we just started having a bunch of mushrooms pop up. They said it's probably not as likely, but there are poisonous mushrooms in Washington, so we should look at that. Yeah, and we looked into, like, I, t I typed in, because I heard about three dogs dying from blue-green algae at the same time in North Carolina, but those are much smaller dogs. They were 80 pound dogs. Yeah. Um, you kind of talked about your dogs, just kind of your history <clears throat> with them. Um, they were very active and, and yes. fun, fun loving, kind of family friendly. Yeah. What kind of dogs were they? They were just happy, loving dogs. You know, they want to always jump on our bed. Uh, Rhea would just, if we would leave, Rhea would jump on that counter right there and, and look out the window <laughs> until we'd come back. So we pull in, all of a sudden we see Rhea just laying on the counter. That, that scooping up moment is it's heart-wrenching. Right? Yeah, I'm sorry. it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> especially three. Yeah, it was it was horrible. Did you at least have a moment to shed your thoughts? Yeah. So yeah, after so after I dug the hole and we wrapped them up, we laid them to rest. We prayed for them. Yeah, but then we had to go to you know we had to go to California the next morning for uh, for a wedding and. For her, you know, she has a grandpa that's not going to make it anytime. You know, he, he's not going to be around. So we had to go see some family on her side. So we didn't even have a time to grieve until just last night and today when we got back. Everything really just one thing after the other. Um, yeah, that kind of the pressure of well, we already have a flight booked. Um, yeah. Something we can do. Um, I can't imagine imagine doing that. No, yeah, and then we stayed with her dad, and her dad has two beautiful dogs that were just like playing with us, and it was it was hard. What what was that like for you having to leave so soon? Um, I didn't. We didn't want to leave, but we don't know when the last time we were going to be able to see her grandfather, because he's you know he just fell, and now he has pneumonia. He's ninety seven, and I mean even when we went and saw him. We couldn't even really see him. Yeah, it was, I mean, we saw him, but we had to go outside, wear masks, and it was for like five, ten minutes. And he couldn't even talk. Your family's been through a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry. You guys have to go through this. It's crazy how things can change so suddenly. Oh, yeah, yes. Your post on Facebook really seem to beg for answers. Yeah. Um, kind of talk to me about what, what steps you guys have already taken to try and find those answers to what happened to your dogs. Yeah, so we called the uh, Ecology DNR. We talked to WSU, done a fish and game. So we have e the Ecology Department come in here in probably the next half hour to go take samples of the river and then kind of look around the river and Really, there's not, for people like us, there's no handbook on how to deal with this. So kind of going on Facebook and people have reached out to us, like you. 
And so that's kind of the steps that we've taken. Uh, it sounded like you had a strong suspicion that it was blue-green algae that may have been the cause. Can you kind of talk about what prompted those feelings? Yeah, at first, we I didn't really think it was blue-green algae. I'm still a little hesitant because um, our dogs are really big. And that's just kind of weird that the blue-green algae can knock out three dogs like that in 20 minutes or throughout the time of them being out there. But people are saying it could be blue-green algae, and that's what kind of makes us suspicious. And if you go out there, you can clearly see that there's a film of algae in the river, and I wasn't really informed. I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that. I didn't know what I had. I wasn't looking for that. I was just throwing the stick to my dogs. And, uh, but also, I, have a <clears throat> I kind of have a feeling it could be some sort of poison. So it's toss-up between that or the blue-green algae. I know it was kind of a quick turnaround for you guys to leave, but have you heard anything from maybe other uh, families or neighbors in the area of, of them experiencing something similar? Or So no one's experienced anything like this, but there have been people that live on the river, downriver, and they, they've just said, wow, this is ne we've, we've lived here 30 years. We've never seen anything like it, never heard anything like it. Um, yeah, nothing like it. There has been one lady who had a mastiff who, I don't know if it was from the river, but the dog wasn't feeling well, so they went and got samples from the dog, from the dog's throw up, but that dog ended up living, so.